Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and I'm one of the contributing editors over at Book Riot. So recently I read a short story collection which I will talk about in a minute but I posted about it on my Instagram and then I left a caption basically saying how this is the first short story collection I've read in like three years or at least read to completion in about three years and a couple of people commented on it being like why? <laughs> Normal question, um, but they just wanted to know like what it was about short story collections in general that made it difficult for me to read or read to completion. So I thought I would talk a little bit about what I look for in short story collections and then if these are also things that you look for in short story collections, I'll also have some recommendations afterwards. So first up, right off the bat, I'm just going to say that one of the main things I like in short story collections is when they are based in reality of some sort. So I don't like the short story collections that are more fantastical in nature, like ones that have like magical elements like woven into it and things like that. They usually don't sit very well with me. I don't know 100% why that is. I can sometimes handle like a little bit of a magic element or like fantastical element in it, but I want like the majority of the story to be grounded in reality. I honestly don't have a good reason for this at all other than for me like short stories obviously are shorter so they can't be expounded upon so like those fantastical elements just require you to just completely buy into it without any sort of explanation because there's no time for explanations and it's hard for me to just do that. Sorry. So like 99% of the time if I'm going to get, read and really enjoy a short story collection it will be like based in reality somewhat. So there'll be like contemporary fiction or historical fiction something along those lines but they won't be like that literary fiction that like throws in like these little magical elements into it or anything along those lines. Secondly it has to have some sort of unifying theme to it I think and I realize that what I'm looking for here is a theme that compels me as a reader to keep going. So one of the problems I have with short story collections, not like a problem I have with them, but a problem that makes it difficult for me to finish them is that like when I'm finished with a story there has to be something that compels me to keep going and to read the next story. I usually don't read them all like straight in a row but there has to be something that's pulling me back to this collection to read it again. Um, you know with novels like if you get hooked into that storyline you get have that feeling of going wanting to go back to it because you want to see how the story is going to resolve but if you're reading a short story collection that pull isn't going to be there and that's also part of the reason why it's hard for me to start story, short story collections because there has to be some sort of pull to get me to pick it up in the first place but especially like once I've already started it I'm going to be finishing stories and there has to be something compelling about the collection to keep going and finish the collection. So you'll see in a minute that all of those short story collections that I'm going to talk about have some sort of unifying themes and ideas that appeal to me as a reader in general but also just were really well executed in these collections. And the third thing that is really specific about what I enjoy in short story collections has to do with the length of the stories themselves. So I can't handle short story collections that have too many stories in them and I can't handle short story collections that don't have like the right length in terms of short story collections. Like I can handle some varying lengths but for me a good short story is usually between 10 and 20 pages because that gives enough development to the story itself that you feel invested in what's going on and by the end of it you actually care about whatever the circumstance is but it also can't be too long because then it just feels like it's filled with unnecessary details or information or plot points or anything along those lines. Um, like once you start pushing into the, like the 40-50 page mark then at that point I feel like you should have just fleshed this out into a full like novella or novel size thing. So I feel like 10 to 20 pages is usually like a really great sweet spot for stories. Again some of the ones I'm going to mention here there are ones that are shorter than that and things like that but usually the short story collections that really really compel me the stories that compel me in those collections are usually in that 10 to 20 page mark. All right, so now onto the short story collections. So the one that I most recently finished was Humiliation by Paulina Flores. This is by a Chilean author and it was translated from Spanish by Megan McDowell. This is a really fantastic collection, obviously, because that's 
what compelled me to keep going with it. And the title does sort of give away what the unifying theme is here a little bit. Like a lot of the stories in here have to deal with humiliation to some degree. Although I do feel like humiliation feels like very strong. But like from the first story you tell you can tell that there's like levels of like shame I would say. But shame doesn't sound as good a uh, title for a collection of short stories and humiliation. <laughs> So yeah, almost all of the stories take place in Chile and you are following often characters who are in like middle or lower classes and it follows a variety of different people and situations but they all have like a similar vibe to them. Um, they're all people who like I said are in like either middle or lower classes and they are either like trying to make their lives better for the most part or they had tried in the past and failed um or it's like people sort of looking back on their lives and seeing different turning points there are a lot of like coming of age stories in here which is a thing that i really enjoy and it just like deals with these internal thoughts and feelings that you think about growing up and also the things you think about when you are looking back on your life growing up. And yeah, it's just really beautiful. The writing is obviously fantastic. Obviously, I think the translation is fantastic. Um, and I think that the stories in here are really just compelling. The writing in here is fantastic. And the very first story I think gives a very good tone for what the rest of this collection will be like. Um, the first one is probably one of my favorites in this collection. Um, I will say that the last story in here is one that has like 50 pages to it and I was the least favorite in my collection and it also helped me clarify that point I have about the number of pages <laughs> that I think a short story collection should be. So yeah I think that this is a really fantastic collection. It just came out last November so if you are someone who enjoys contemporary short stories highly recommend this. My all-time favorite short story collection is Unaccustomed Earth by Jim Lahiri. Um, I am a huge Jhumpa Lahiri fan, but this is my favorite thing that she has written ever, which is interesting because again, I'm not someone who is normally compelled by short stories or normally loves short stories, but the fact that like her collection of short stories just ended up being the book that I gave five stars to out of her, you know, entire catalog says a lot, I think. So this entire collection, it looks like pretty thick, but it only has eight stories in it. And again, I think that's part of the reason why I enjoy it so much. Like it has like these longer stories that allow you to go a little bit deeper with all of the characters. The stories are really beautiful, really moving. She won the Pulitzer Prize for her other short story collection, Interpreter of Maladies, and I do think that's a very good collection, but I do think this is actually the stronger collection. These are beautiful stories following families and marriages and people who are immigrating to different countries, and it just has a lot of just really beautiful writing that you don't really see very often, or at least I feel like I don't see very often, but I'm also, you know, a huge Jhumpa Lahiri fan, so very few people meet up to her level of writing in my opinion. Like it's lyrical and really paints a picture and is moving and yeah, I just love this collection so so much. So if you haven't read anything by her, this is again my favorite out of everything she's ever written and so would be a great place to start. Although everything else in her catalog might seem like a disappointment after this. All right next another short story collection that I just absolutely adored was How to Breathe Underwater by Julie Oringer. Um, this is a collection of again nine stories so for a relatively normal size book you can tell that these are pretty fleshed out and they are all coming of age stories which I think is part of the reason why I really love them. Um, so I think that if you're someone who enjoys contemporary young adult coming of age stories this would be a really great collection to pick up and I think especially like it's harder to find like young adult short story collections in my opinion like they exist. It doesn't feel like they're talked about quite as much so I really really adored this one. The stories in here are also just really moving and beautiful as well. It deals with some heartbreaking situations and I think she also just really perfectly encapsulates what it's like to grow up as a girl in the modern world. I mean not that modern. This collection came out a while ago. It originally came out in like the early 2000s so maybe it just perfectly captured what it was like for me to grow up. <laughs> And maybe that's part of the reason why I enjoyed it so much. But I really think that this is like a beautiful collection of coming of age stories. So again, highly recommend this if you're into that. All right, and then two more short story collections I'm just gonna talk about really quickly. Um, the first one is Almost Famous Women by Megan Mankey Bergman. Um, this is one where I don't love like the entire collection. I think that some of these stories are much strongerly executed. That's not a real way to phrase things, uh, but you know what I mean? <laughs> Um, and some of these stories are just much stronger than others. But the reason why I enjoy this collection so much is because I love the sort of 
concept behind all of them and so this is sort of one where the theme in and of itself of all these stories is so strong that it kept compelling me to keep going even when some of the stories were misses. So the idea behind this collection of short stories is that all of the people who are profiled in here, profiled as if this is real, but like the, all of the stories that Megan Mayhew Beerman has decided to write in here has to do with like people who are like almost famous or are like tangentially next to a famous person. So like Lord Byron's daughter, Oscar Wilde's niece, or Edna St. Vincent Millay's sister or something along those lines. So they're all people who have some sort of relative closeness to famousness, but they aren't famous themselves. Obviously all of this is fictionalized but I think Megan Mayhew Bergman did like some level of research in terms of these different people but I think that they're also just like really fantastic looks at what it's like to be sort of next to fame in certain degrees. There are also stories in here about people trying to achieve their own levels of fame and success and not succeeding at it. These are also all like historical fiction and it's filled with stories of these women who are basically defying social standards and all of those sorts of things in order to pursue their passions and stuff like that and that's always something I appreciate as well. So yeah I'm a fan of this collection even though every single story in here wasn't a hit but I always like recommend this one to people if they enjoy historical fiction stuff. And then finally I have In the Country by Mia Alvar and I believe that this is the last short story collection I read which was like again three years ago. This is a collection of mostly historical fiction but you are following characters who are originally from the Philippines Ooh, yeah, it is storming here. <laughs> so you're following characters who are all originally from the Philippines and are part of uh, the Filipino diaspora, basically. So these characters have all traveled to other parts of the world and they're reflecting on basically their life and their country and their identity and things along those lines and sort of exploring these new places that they're living in and figuring out who they are and who they're going to be in these places. It's a really fantastic collection if you're someone who's really interested in stories that explore like immigrant experiences, explorations of identity and home and things along those lines. This is definitely a collection to have on your list. I know a lot of people were talking about it when it first originally came out and it's definitely one that again it's only nine stories so it has like a decent amount of depth to all of the stories in this collection and they have that sort of theme running through it which is a theme that I care about a lot in stories so obviously compelled me a lot. But yeah it's a pretty strong collection in my opinion. So that is everything I have to talk about this week. Let me know down in the comments below if you are a fan of short story collections or not and what your reasons are for either of those opinions. Um, and if you are a fan of short story collections let me know what you look for in short story collections or some of your favorites or if you've read any of the collections I've talked about here today feel free to talk about that down in the comment section below. So yeah that's all I have for this week and I will see you all next week. Bye!